Hi and welcome back. Today we're going to see how to build an indicator that scans different time frames in parallel. For this video, I took, for example, the daily and the four hours time frames. I will show you how we can create a custom indicator in Python on the daily time frame and translate the signal into the four hours time frame. Of course, you can apply the same method and the same code to translate the trading signals into any time frame of your choice. The Python code we will be using in this video is available for download from the link in the description so you can download it with the data files and try running and modifying the code for your experiments. The reason you might want to consider a multi time frame approach for your trading is simply because some time frames and usually larger time frames will provide data with lower noise and a global picture of the current context, the overall trend, the reversals, and so on. In the following example, we will look for rejection candles happening on the daily time frame, and we will transmit the signal to the four hours time frame. So we can combine the daily signal with patterns occurring also on lower time frames, like the four hours or the one hour, for example. And this way, signals on one time frame can be confirmed by signals occurring on lower time frames. In this example, we can see how one rejection signal represented by this purple point on the daily time frame was also retrieved on the four hours chart but instead of one signal we got five candles that cover the whole day because this is when the rejection is happening on the daily time frame in the meantime we can benefit from the fact that other patterns might be occurring in parallel on the four hours chart to confirm the daily rejection this is just one example i'm showing here for the sake of this video imagine all the patterns that we could be cross-checking on different time frames to confirm our signals now let's jump into the coding part and see how we can code all of this in python language this is our jupyter notebook file so the first cell is just for loading the data and notice i'm loading two data frames here the first one df daily and the second one is df four hours and this is why I have two data files for the daily time frame and the four hours time frame as well. Now, just to keep this Jupyter notebook clean, I've coded all the functions in a utils file, a Python file, which I'm importing in this cell. This way we can simply call the function clean data frame on the first data frame, then we clean the data frame on the second data frame and we get clean data frames. Now, if you are curious about what's the content of this function, we can take a quick look at the utils.py Python file. We can see this is the uh, clean data frame. It takes a data frame and it's going to clean the GMT time column from fractions of seconds. It's going to cast it into date time format. Then we're going to clean empty or no movement candles. And we're going to set the GMT time as an index. So the index is not just an increasing integer anymore. And at the end, we return the data frame in the format that was just prepared. Then we're calling other functions. So we're going to detect rejection candles on daily time frame. This is a function that takes a data frame. It takes a parameter called tail body ratio. So that's basically the ratio of the tail or the wick of the candle over the length of the body of the candle. And the body percentage limit, this is basically a parameter to filter out those small body candles because we don't want to consider these in our signals. We want a minimum body for the candle before we can consider it to be tested for any rejection signal. So the way this function works, it's going to add a new column to the data frame. So candle signal underscore rejection. At first, we have zeros in all the rows because we don't have any of these signals. And for each of the rows, we're going to extract the open price, the close price, the high and the low price. And we'll test if we have a bullish rejection, in which case the current row's signal is equal to two. And if we have a bearish rejection, the signal is equal to one. Then we return the data frame and the bullish rejection and the bearish rejection are computed using these two functions that were defined right here. So these are going to test the ratios of the wicks of the candle over the body of the candle to see if any candle has a long wick ratio over the body, in which case we can identify if it's a bullish or a bearish rejection candle. And by default, we are taking a tail to body ratio or a wick to body ratio of two at least to consider that a candle is presenting a rejection pattern so back to our jupyter notebook file we can see how we used this function so we provided the daily time frame here the data frame and the body percentage limit that's the minimum body length of the candle divided by the current closing price so that's a kind of a percentage of the closing price and so in the daily time frame now if we run this i'm going to run the first cell the second one well, we can also print 
the daily time frame. And we can see that we have one more column, which is the candle signal rejection right here. And we can actually check where exactly do we have a rejection signal that's different than uh, zero. And we can see all the occurrences of these signals, the uh, rejection signals happening on the daily time frame. So just as a reminder, these two are bearish rejections because we have the number one. This one is a bullish rejection and so on. Now I'm going to call two other functions, the add point position column. That's a function that will take the data frame and wherever you have a signal, wherever we pass the signal column, it's going to place uh, points or positions in a new column, like coordinates, either above or below the candle, depending if it's a bearish or a bullish rejection signal, for example. This is just for the plotting part. So we're just adding these points that we're going to use later on to plot where we have the uh, signal occurrences. And then we have one more function that's also from the utils.py file. It's for plotting the uh, candlesticks, basically the chart with the signals. So it takes the data frame, it takes the start index and the number of rows to be plotted. So basically these two parameters will allow us to slice the part that we need to plot from the whole data frame. And now we can zoom in just to check what are the rejection candles that are detected by our algorithm. I'm zooming in on this one, that's a bearish one. It's barely, uh, the volume is relatively small. This one is also a bearish one. We can move on the right. This one is a very clear rejection candle. We can increase the ratio actually. We can increase the uh, tail to body ratio to 2.5 or 3, for example, if you want these strong rejection signals. And this one is also a rejection signal, a rejection candle. Remember, this is the daily time frame. So when this happens, it actually means more than what you see as a rejection on lower time frames like the minutes time frame and so on. So now we have our signals, the rejection signals on the daily time frame. And we have the other time frame, the data frame on the four hours, actually, that we need to populate as well with these signals coming from the daily time frame. The way to do this is to use this line. This is the magic of Python. Like you can translate all of this, all the signals from one data frame to another using just one single line of code. So I'm creating a new column called daily rejection for the uh, four hours data frame. And it's equal to the candle signal rejection from the daily time frame dot re-index four hours data frame index with a forward fill. Now, what does this mean? The first step this function is going to try to match the indexes of both data frames. And whenever the index doesn't match with the uh, four hours one, because the daily time frame is shorter, you have less number of days than the number of rows in the four hours data frame. So you need a method to fill um, the missing rows. And in this case, it's going to be the forward fill. So whatever value we had on from the daily rejection signal, it's going to be forward filled throughout all the candles on the four hours data frame that match the same day from the daily uh, time frame. Let's see this in practice actually, and then I'll get back to explaining what this part does. So I'm going to filter from the four hours data frame daily rejection cases that are different than zero. So the first bearish signal of the daily rejection is 31st of March 2011. And then we have 31st of March at 4 a.m. at 8 midday or in the afternoon until 8 and the market closed. So all of this is basically the same signal. It's forward filled by the number one, the signal one, and this is coming from the daily time frame. Let's go down and check the daily time frame. I think we've had it before. So it's right here. And we can see that 31st of March 2011, we did have a day with bearish rejection. The very next day afterwards, the closest day afterwards is 21st of April. So we just have 31st of March right here. And this is why we see on the four hours, the 31st of March, all the candles coming from that same day will carry the same signal because we use the forward fill method. So it's going to be the first uh, signal and then we forward fill the value of the signal for the rest of the candles, even though we don't have matching rows uh, for each of these in the daily time frame. So um, we're just matching the first one and then anything 
beyond uh, forward, we're going to fill it with the same value. And this is all happening here with the method forward fill. Let's check another day. So the second one is 21st of April, and it's going to be up to this row because then we have different signal. Notice right here. So if we check 21st of April on the daily time frame, so that's 21st of April, we have a better signal as well. Then the first bullish signal we are having is 12th of July, and we can see the whole day is bullish signal. So this is how you can bring a signal from the daily time frame to the four hours time frame or to any other uh, time frame. You, you need to have the uh, time, the date time format as an index, and then you can use the re-index function to match the indexes and forward fill with the values of the signal. Okay, now what's the issue with this part? The thing is, in my data, some signals occurred on Sundays. And Sundays, it's just a few hours of uh, when the market opens at midnight or so, depending on your data and what's the time zone you are using. And basically, the signal on Sunday, it's actually a signal on Monday because the market doesn't open on Sunday, it opens on Monday. And uh, But in some regions and some places, depending on which market we are talking about, we notice that the market starts on Sunday evening if you're using a local time and so on. So when the rejection happens on Sunday, Python doesn't know that this is the same signal that should be extended on Mondays as well because it's basically Monday opening the market. Only few candles related to Sunday evening when the market is considered opening are carrying the signal on the lower time frame, on the four hours time frame. To avoid this and make sure that the daily signal is extended from Sunday to Monday, because basically it's Monday's signal, we're doing this a bit manually using this loop right here. So if the day is a Sunday, we're going to extend its signal to the coming six candles, for example, because this is how many four hours candles there are in one day. And this is what we are doing right here. So if it's a Sunday, just fill the next day or the next candles, next six candles as well with the same signal. We can plot this using exactly the same functions as before, but this time um, uh, calling the function add point position column on the four hours data frame and on the column daily rejection. So it's basically we're plotting the daily rejections, but on the four hours time frame using the data that we have just computed. So we're adding the uh, positions, these purple points that we will be plotting and then we're calling the plotting function to plot the uh, four hours data frame with the start index 350. This is the row where we're going to start our slice of plotting and then up to 450. So basically 100 rows we're plotting. So it's from here up to here. And this is it. So we can see the uh, purple points. These are the signals coming from the daily rejection. And this is related to uh, 31st of March. So let's make sure this is a bearish rejection because the points are above the candles. We can verify this from the yeah, signals here, the data. So 31st of March, this is a bearish signal. To 12th of July, for example, we would have a bullish signal. And check this out. So instead of uh, 350, I'm going to put uh, maybe 700. We're going to reach July probably. So July is somewhere out. We're still in June. So. Yeah, so this is the signal in July. The reason I'm showing you this is sometimes you have this rejection on the daily time frame on July. Okay, so we've had this candle here for the daily time frame. You can see a clear rejection candle. It's very clean. So we have three red candles followed by this strong rejection candle and a very long tail. And if we go to the four hours, we can see that we have a bullish engulfing candle as well. So these are two signals occurring at the same time. So we have the rejection on the daily and the bullish engulfing candle happening on the four hours. And this was all I had to tell you for this video. Is if you want me to investigate more this multi-time frame aspect of trading, share your strategies, your ideas in the comments section. You can pick from these ideas what might be potentially profitable and we can try this and I'll get back to you with another video with a full backtest on a full strategy. Until our next one, trade safe and see you next time.